Guys, Mr. Bowman here. We are carrying on with 2.12 probability methods. This time around, we're focusing on all the merit questions from the 2018 exam. Um, keep an eye out for the 2017, 16, and 15 merit questions. They'll be up uh, in time. So I've got a bit of a hint for this question, inverse normal distribution. And the themes may be useful because it's the same context from the Achieve question videos. Um, but let's jump into question number one. Um, each day the temperatures are recorded, so remember that from the previous one. Um, they've got the mean temperature in a 24-hour period. So part A, over the last seven years in Reefton, it had a mean of 11.6 and a standard deviation of 4.8. People in Reefton talk about the hottest 1% of days being scorches. What is the lowest possible temperature for one of these scorcher days? So this is an inverse probability question because that 1%, you've been given the probability, which means you've got to work backwards to find out one of the other variables. In this case, the temperature or the X value. Um, but as always, we're always going to start by drawing our normal distribution curve. And we've been told a mean of 11.6 and a standard deviation of 4.8. You've got to think about the hottest 1%. Where would that sit in our graph? This 1% is probably going to be the highest temperature on the very right. Um, so I'm just going to draw that. So that there is X. That's my, my unknown hottest temperature. And the area of that shaded portion is going to be 0 0.01, which is the decimal version of that 1%. Once you've got your graph, we can see we're only missing one of the variables. We can use that inverse normal distribution function on our graphics calculators to do that. And when you're putting that into your calculator, you need to say, well, what tail do you have? In this case, we've got a right-hand tail because our shaded area is on the right. You then need to talk about, well, what is the area of that shaded portion? 0 0.01. You need to tell them it's standard deviation of 4.8 and finishing up with a mean of 11.6. When you put all of that in, that's going to tell you the missing X value. So in our case, X was equal to 22.8 degrees, and I rounded that to 1 dp. So that means these hottest 1% of days will be 22.8 degrees or higher. So we're now looking at question two. We're going to start with part I, I, I. Um, reading through the context, we'll go through it quick. Um, so we've got some data, weather data from Niwa is classified the days as windy or still based on the um, speed of the wind. He's classified if they are wet or dry based on the rainfall. Here are the results in the table and you can see, there you go, it's a windy or still day and that's the wet and the dry days up there. So over the years, is it more likely to be wet on a windy day or wet on a still day? Your answer should be supported with probability calculation. So to do this question, we need to calculate the probability of those two things I've underlined, and then we need to check which one has a bigger probability, and that is the event that is more likely to occur. So let's get into that. So firstly, we need to find, well, what's the probability of it being wet given it is windy. So that relates to the first part. So we know it's windy. And we care about if it's wet or not. So let's jump into our calculation. So don't forget about F over T is how I approach these two A tables. The T relates for the total number of days that you care about. In this case, we only care about those windy days. So that denominator is going to be 1646. And that numerator favorable outcomes. So of these windy days, how many of them are wet, and that's going to be the 553. Five, From there, we plug that into our calculator, and hopefully you're getting 0 0.3360, and that there had a 4dp rounding. So that's our first part, we'll give that a tick. We're now looking at the next one, probability of it being wet, given it was a still day. So let's write down our notation, probability of wet, given still. And same thing, you've got to be thinking F over T. Um, our total, we only care about the still days, and we've got 910 of those still days. And from the 910 days, how many of them are favorable? How many of them are wet? They're the ones we care about. And that was 88, which came from over there on our two-way table. Again, plug that into our calculator. We're getting 0 
six, eight, and four DP rounding as I always do. So we've got the two probabilities that relates to that calculations part I had underneath that. We now need to answer the question, which one of these is more likely to occur? And this is when we're gonna need a sentence. So what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna write wet day, wet on windy days is more likely than wet on still days. And if you think about the context, that makes sense. Um, when it's windy, it's probably more likely to be cloudy. Those clouds are going to produce rains. And the still days, that's normally when the clouds are clearer. Maybe there's more sky um, and probably less rain to associate with that. Okay, we're now looking at um, IV. And this is a bit of a wordy question. So a school in... Um, Kaitaia is planning an athletics day in February 2019. The sports coordinator uses the information in table one to calculate the probability of the day being dry and still. So they found the probability of dry and still. So dry and still um, would be that 882 out of that number there. We're not asked to calculate it, but just checking out on the numbers. Give one statistical reason why using table one might not be a valid probability. So we're not asked to calculate something. We've been asked for a reason or an explanation. This is a bit of a wordy question. And when I was looking through this, there, there's one obvious answer. So if we go back to the initial context, you know, this is an average based on the last seven years. So I'll start off with that. So table one is a data set from the last seven years. Oh, last seven years. And this is the key bit here, last seven years, which is not season specific. So we definitely know, so we can see in the question, we definitely know that Athletics Day is going to be in February. But this data here, just an accumulation of every single day across the year. So it's kind of like an average. So we don't know specifically how the weather works in February because you've got all the other months um, of data in there and that's going to muddy the waters we're not really going to be able to see what happens in february we're just going to see an average across the whole year so so this data is not specific to february oh forgive the bad spelling and not having a capital f there not specific to february um which means the sports pro coordinator may, um, and we'll carry on over here, not have calculated an accurate probability. There we go. So that's the answer I would have put up. So I would have talked about the data being general and not specific to February, um, which would have resulted in a, a probability that might not be as accurate or might not be as relevant for February. You also could have talked about other reasons. So for example, they didn't say when the seven years um, was taken. What if this was in the 1940s or the 1950s? So we do know there's a lot of evidence suggesting that climate change is shifting and changing our climate. And the climate and the weather patterns from 1940, 1950 may not reflect the weather patterns in this February 2019. So the oldness of the data may also be another thing that impacts it um, and may result in the coordinator having an, an answer that doesn't reflect or is not accurate. We're on to our last question, question number three from the 2018 merit sections. Um, 
And we've got a probability tree question. And you'll remember this. It's about Timaru and Ashburton. Um, and it's about if they got wet and dry days. So what we needed to do is we need to start off with our probability tree. And I'm going to write ash dry. So that stands for Ashburton being dry. And then ash wet. That stands for Ashburton being wet. Um, so we were told the probability of Ashburton being wet is 0 0.45 or 45%. So down to the bottom here, 0 0.45. This here was 0 0.55. We're then going to split off after that. Um, we've got Timaru dry up the top here. And we've got Timaru wet down the bottom here. And we've got Timaru dry, Timaru wet. And our probabilities, so if you have a look at our graph, this 63%, so if Ashburton was wet, so that would be this branch down here, the probability that it was wet in Timaru is 0 0.63. So 0 0.63, which means that there is 0 0.37. And then same with that ADH, this relates to the dry and dry number. Um, so that there is 0 0.88 with 0 0.12. So that's the probability tree. Now let's get into the question. So if it was dry in Timaru, so this is a conditional question because we know the condition of it being dry in Timaru is absolutely sure. What's the probability of it also being dry in Ashburton? So our notation, so we're trying to find, well, what's the probability of Ashburton? I'm going to write Ash dry given Tim dry. And this question is going to be very tricky. Even though we're looking at probability trees, I want us to think about f over t. And t, down the bottom, that relates to the days which Timaru were dry. That's the only days we really care about. So if you have a look here, we've got Timaru dry here and Timaru dry here. So it's these two events here, they're the only ones that we care about. And the probabilities will be 0 0.55 times 0 0.88 and 0 0.45 times 0 0.37. It's the total probability that relates to Ashburton being dry. Oh, sorry, Timaru being dry. So we've added up the Timaru being dry um, combinations. We now need to figure out of them which is favorable, and that's when Ashburton is dry. So that would be the top one there. So we can see Ashburton is dry, Timaru is dry. The other one we were interested in, Burden down the beginning was wet, so we're not so fussed about that. We only care about that particular combination. That's going to be 0 0.55 times 0 0.88. So you can kind of see that number there comes up twice. And this portion here, that's when Ashburton was wet, when Timaru was wet. Or when Timaru was dry. Once we've done that, we're now going to smash it into our calculator. So the numerator becomes 0 0.484. The denominator becomes 0 0.6505. And we then convert that to a decimal. Hopefully, you're, going to, you're getting 0 0.7740. And that they had a 4DP rounding. So that was the last merit question. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Keep an eye out for the other merit videos and do look out for the excellent stuff coming up as well.